What's up everybody, it is Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross 3 where today we are continuing on with career mode. We are headed to Oakland, the Oakland Alameda Coliseum for round 4, yes, round 4 of the 250 West Championship Series in the career mode. Getting back into the swing of career mode today and trying out some... Uh, just kind of going back to regular gameplay, I guess. I did a first-person, like, hardcore gameplay last time. And while it was fun and challenging, I thought that viewing-wise it wasn't the best. So I kind of wanted to just straight-up play the game and get back to it. Uh, so my flag is Germany. Whoops. Um, all right. We are going to change our bike setup, which is already good. And we're going to go racing. Still on the Gas Monkey, AJE, Husqvarna, and uh, still have the points lead, but I also have the updated, uh, what's that gear pack called, where it's like you get the, uh, I don't know, there, there's a couple different DLCs that have come out lately, and uh, you can get some updated gear and stuff like that, so I got an updated FXR helmet, decided, well, it looks terrible without some matching boots, so I got some matching Fox boots to go with it. Um, Fox and FXR, I guess, doesn't go together perfectly or anything like that, but uh, kind of works. And then I went to fix the numbers on my bike because they're a little bit off because I went back to 101 instead of 52. And the entire right side plate uh, didn't, I don't know, get a number on it or something. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but like, look at, there's no, <laughs> there's no number on the right hand side plate. So we broke the game already, folks. Con con yeah. Congratulations, we've figured out how to break the game which a lot of people have. This game has several bugs and flaws, but that's okay because right now, unfortunately, a lot of people in Italy struggling with the coronavirus issues. So the milestone people not really around to like make major updates or fixes or anything like that. Everybody's working from home. Uh, so hopefully, you know, it all gets better there. It gets better everywhere, really. Um, but uh, understandable why some bugs that might be in the game haven't been fixed of late. Anyway, back racing the 250 West Championship. I'm getting a little bit better at this game when it comes to flow and momentum, which I was really struggling at before. Um, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I just couldn't seem to get anything going in the last video. I think maybe it's the track, to be honest with you. Don't really gel with A2. Uh, this track is, to me at least, a lot more rhythmy. It uh, has a, a better flow to it, and you can actually really well connect the lines from section to section, which I always like about these types of games. Like, it's a Supercross game. It's supposed to feel rhythmic and not uh, almost like an Enduro game where you're having to, like, crunch everything. So this track does a really good job of that. Um, you know, they could, they could have done a little better with the taller whoops or something like that. This uh, wall jump right here doesn't work in this game whatsoever. Like, it pitches you way to the moon and then you land and have zero momentum, anything to hope for. Which I guess in real life was kind of fair because in real life they would land off of that and land in the sand and not have any momentum going, so I get that. Um, but in this game it just feels like it doesn't really work the best. I don't know. My opinion couldn't be, it might not be yours, not entirely sure. Whew, grinding on that tough block there. Alright, I got a pretty good lead established, feeling comfortable. And uh, getting the flow of this track down, I want to get this triple triple a little bit cleaner this lap and did. Trying to use higher gears on a 250F. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it works better to stay the lower gears and get into the revs and really, you know, kind of churn each gear out, or if it's better to just get in high gears and let it kind of lug out. High gears much better in the whoops. Seems like the low gears it likes the you know the turns better for the corners, um, being in the lower gear. So honestly, that's pretty realistic to real life. Uh, you know, the Supercross guys oftentimes have a manipulated gearbox essentially with some high, ugh, taller gearing, can't speak, uh, as opposed to like a regular dirt bike that you just buy off the showroom floor. So in real life, sometimes what they do, um, you know, is basically stick to mostly second gear on a 450, probably mixing in third gear a little bit more often on a 250. Um, but sometimes you'll, you'll hear about guys getting into, uh, you know, lug in a, a, a mid-range third gear or getting into fourth on a lower gearing for a set of whoops and then obviously in the corners you want to probably be a little bit lower maybe 
I, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I would think that some guys corner in third gear if they're trying to get something big out of a corner and they just kind of use that clutch to lug the bike. So that's kind of cool how this game can relate that feeling a little bit. Not so much because you don't use the clutch in this game, but more or less just because you, you have to shift and really utilize the different kind of flow of the gears and whatnot. So just something that uh, I picked up on these last couple days, honestly, from playing the game a little bit more frequently and getting better at it. I like that rhythm lane. I guess I could quad out right there. I haven't really tried. Putting down burners, though. Feeling, feeling the flow. Get all the way into the corner. Ugh. Very unrealistic right there, being able to jump that far and come to, like, almost a complete stop. But it is a video game, so it's not necessarily supposed to be all realistic. As I was playing Sim yesterday on Sky Madness for track walk, um, very unrealistic things going on with that. So just because it's an MX simulator or MX bikes or one of these games that are meant to be more of the simulated variety doesn't necessarily mean it's realistic. It is still a video game at the end of the day. The same way that the E NASCAR race that went on this weekend uh, you know, everybody got two resets. So you spun, hit the wall, damaged your vehicle, blew up the engine, whatever you did, you still got two full resets to just get back into the race. Um, they had a myriad of current NASCAR drivers race out, which is really cool. And it'd be cool to see that for Supercross, but I just doubt we'd ever see the likes of Eli Tomac, Ken Roxon, etc., etc. you know, get together and be like, yeah, let's just have a, you know, a LAN Supercross 3 party or even a, uh, a lobby of Supercross 3 together, it's particularly because Ken Roxon's not in the game. But, you know, even if he was, I just don't think that those guys are really the gamers. Uh, you know, you looked at someone, I know Josh Hill games pretty frequently. Aaron Plessinger has been known over the years as a good frequent gamer. And a lot of other guys do game. So I guess on some degree we could get a myriad of actual real life pros together for a little fun race during this uh, really weird time that we're going through. But I think it'd be really, really hard and with no coordination going on from Feld or anything like that right now, it seems almost impossible, but uh, we shall see. By the way, if you're uh, not following what's been going on, because I haven't really done an update video, the national schedule was just announced last week um, with a revised schedule that starts in June. And we think Supercross is not happening until September or October, but we don't know that for sure. That's speculation. That's speculation on my part. That's speculation on whoever's part that you want to talk to about that. Congratulations, you achieved the contract objective. So I just got 100,000 credits. You have unlocked the Gas Monkey Energy AJE Motorsports 1 outfit. So cool, now I get to choose either a new sponsor or a new official team. So I could stick with Gas Money, I could go with uh, Gas Monkey, I could go with JGR Yoshimura Suzuki, or I could pick Supercross or GoPro as a sponsor. How about I go GoPro and I'll just customize my own deal this time. How about that? All right, so go to model. I'm feeling like uh, maybe like a Cowie. I already got the bike. That's easy enough. So what graphics do I want? This is going to be where I start first. All right, guys. Well, my capture failed, and I didn't realize it until after I did the San Diego Supercross. So we're now in Atlanta getting ready to do the showdown, East-West showdown, the first one of the season. And this is the bike that I had ended up setting up with the gear and all that stuff. So I'm sorry you missed the customization part, but hey, now you get to see the finished product and we're going to go racing in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Actually, before I get too deep in that, let me see if I can change these numbers without it freaking out on me. It was freaking out on me on the, on the Husky, but maybe this will work better. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. Probably just ruin the side plates. Oh, no. The side plates look fine. Okay. Go that way. And go about there. Perfect. All right. Now I'm set up. Bam. That's all I wanted to get accomplished. All right. You didn't miss much, though. San Diego was a pretty simple victory. So we'll just go to Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the showdown in Atlanta. 
And uh, one thing I'm curious about with this is in the real life showdown, there are two different points leaders because the two classes are facing off against each other. So I'm curious now that we're meeting up with the West guys, if there's going to be two red plates, it should be me. And yes, Justin Cooper on the inside gate has a red plate on. So cool. That is a, a nice added touch that they were able to figure out about this game because there are definitely two different points leaders of the series right now. So you can see down the inside, actually you can't see him because I'm going to get to the corner first, but uh, Justin Cooper did definitely have a red plate on the inside. I saw it. I believe it. If you don't believe me, well, then pause the video a couple frames ago and check it out. But I'm going to try to pull away out front, little triple in, scrub, double, or I'm sorry, triple action. And see, it even shows on the leaderboard. I have the red plates, and Justin Cooper, who was just in fourth and fell down the order, also has red plates. That's kind of cool. I, I think that that's like a nice added touch that they have to this so that it's um, it's just got that little extra dynamic of realism, folks. It's not, it's not overly crazy or anything like that, but it's just enough that it's like that's kind of cool that they figured out how to do that. Because... I don't know, like you would think it's a pretty simple thing not to miss, but as a video game developer, it's not something that they're always looking at. They've got a lot of other things they're trying to focus on to make the game better. And uh, to not skip over a small detail like that, I think is just kind of cool. So I figured I would bring it up since I saw it. I got that rhythm section all wrong. Yeah, Justin Cooper, he's actually closing up. That Shane McElrath right on my heels here. Whoops, wow, how did I land that? Switched to the wrong camera angle and then didn't shift up down the straightaway. So McElrath going down the inside. Gosh, it's really weird to see him on a Troy the Designs KTM. Like, I'm already, I know it's we've only ran four rounds of the East in real Supercross, but I'm already kind of like used to him on the Star Yamaha and forgot about him a little bit on that TLD KTM already. You know what? Just so I can show off the fact that those red plates exist, I'm going to wait for Justin Cooper. So go ahead, Shane. Sugar Shane to the lead. All right, come on, JC. All right, pull alongside. There's those red plates on the 32, so bam, they figured it out. All right, enough of that. Nobody really cares. You guys just want to see a good race, so let me go catch Sugar Shane out front and see if I can make a move. Whoops, a little tight turn there. Didn't realize that big barrier was on the inside. Gonna rip a tear off coming down into this corner. When is he gonna rip the tear off? There it is on the triple triple. Uh, didn't get on top of that first whoop and that just brutal the rest of the way through. All right, can I run down Mr. Shane McElrath? Yeah, so I'm sorry that the San Diego recording didn't funnel through. You guys actually didn't miss a ton from that. Um, one of the things I talked about because it was on San Diego and, and uh, if you guys are a follower of the channel or follower of Moto YouTubers in general, you'll remember that San Diego was uh, round one or race one, whatever you want to call it, of the uh, Moto YouTuber tournament that we did back in February. Gosh, that seems like forever ago, but that's basically only a month ago at this point. Um, it was supposed to be between myself, Thailand, Donut, um, Windham 151, MXWay Gamer, and Yellow S2K. But Yellow S2K and MXWay Gamer uh, ended up being busy for the second event that we tried to run because the first event had some technical difficulties with servers and whatnot. So the second time we tried to get together and do it, uh, it didn't work out. Anyway, the reason I'm re-bringing re this up is just because I was talking about how good all these dudes are. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys right now that are uh, watching videos on YouTube during this crazy times that we're in in right now. Um, maybe you're watching only me and you don't know about these other guys. But if, if you happen to watch me, I'm sure you also watch some of these other guys I'm talking about. And they're all just such good dudes, man. Honestly, like I, I feel like as a, a YouTuber uh, or a YouTube consumer myself i always want to feel like the people that i watch on youtube are actual good people and and the the niceness that you see out of them uh is real and while i can't speak for myself i'm sure some people probably think i'm a uh, a b-hole a little bit um uh, but i think most people like me i don't i don't know maybe they don't 
Uh, but all these other dudes that you watch, I think that they're all really stand-up great dudes, and, and I just wanted to kind of lay some praise their way just to say, like, hey, it was really cool that we got to do a tournament together. I hope we get to do something again like that soon. I try to whenever I get stuff together, um, like we did that kind of stream thing a couple about a weekend and a half ago or a weekend and a half ago a week and a half ago on the weekend of indie supercross tried to get as many other youtubers in there as i could we got marcus beasley who's another really good dude um you know tyler and donut all those guys sometimes we get to play together sometimes but uh they're just good dudes man just wanted to kind of ring some praises about them while we're in the middle of a video and uh holy cow i am actually not going to catch shane mackerath so letting him go was a mistake apparently because he just absolutely worked me in this main event i just can't seem to get a couple lines together to catch him although now that i say that it seems like this last lap i definitely have caught him quite a bit in just a couple turns uh he's going to get away from me in this straightaway i think but uh yeah man he worked me in this main event that was crazy how much better he was in that second half I thought I had him covered, and I was just like, eh, let's let him go. I'll be able to get him back. By the way, I don't think I'm three seconds behind him. I feel like that's, that time is lying to me. Three seconds seems like a little bit much, but I digress. Anyway, wanted to come back, finish off this career, midi career mode video for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.